work. Okay. Um, so yesterday we went over some example problems. Today I'm going to go over a problem that ties, kind of ties a bunch of it together. So we looked at a couple of types of problems yesterday. One worked like this where we had a half circle. Then we had a piece off the edge of it where this came in and it was a tangent here. Let's give, well, let's go 40 feet there with a 20 foot height. I want to find this dimension X. We'll would call this eight feet and we're going to call this a 512 slope. I want to find X, and I want to find the area of that shape. Now, the significant part of this problem here is the fact that we're not given X, we're trying to find X. Because we're trying to find that dimension X, totally changes our approach to this problem. So first, we need to find a right angle somewhere. Well, we've got one right angle that's already in here. That's right here in this corner. We have a vertical dimension, the 8 feet, and then the horizontal dimension, which is x. Those have to form a right angle to each other. The other main spot to find right angles is a tangent to a circle. So we draw in the radius here of the circle to that point of tangency. That must be a right angle as well. So we have those two right angles. Now we tend to want to think in terms of horizontal and vertical components. Right now we have two sloped surfaces here. One is this one here that was given to us, and the other is this here, our radius that we drew in to be perpendicular, or right angle to that tangent. So let's break those sloped surfaces down into horizontal and vertical components. So I'm gonna drop a line down vertically there from that intersection, that radius hitting the tangent. Then I'm gonna run a lot of, line over here horizontal from that point there. Now, I have rectangles, right triangles, and of course I still have a sector of a circle over here. Need some, some angles here. I, all the only angle I have given right now is this right angle down here. I need some form of an angle. Well, I can find this angle right here because it is a heel angle of this 512 slope. Remember the heel angle is always the inverse tangent of the slope. So in this case, it'll be an inverse tangent of 512. Which we know is gonna be 22.62 degrees. Oh, if that is 22.62 degrees, this angle over here has to be its complement. Because that's a right triangle. We know this angle is 90 degrees. And we know that the three angles add up to 180. So this one here is 67.38 degrees. We know that this is a right angle. So those two angles, that 67.38 and this one here, have to be complements. So that angle is 22 0.62 degrees, which makes this angle down here again 67.38 degrees. So now we have every angle in this figure. We need to look at a triangle now where we know one of the sides. The only triangle we have here that we know a side of is this one right here. So I'm going to draw that one, redraw it. We have the right angle there. We know this is 67.38 degrees. And this up here is 22.62 degrees. And we know that this is 20 feet. That hypotenuse is the radius of our circle, 20 feet. With that, I'm gonna label a couple of dimensions. I'm gonna call this A and B. And I will use the 67.38 degree angle here. So B would be the opposite side, and we're going to use the hypotenuse there, so we're going to use a sine 
minus 67.38 degrees equals B over 20. You will put this over 1 so that we can cross multiply and divide. Sine 67.38 times 20 divided by 1 gives us that that is 18.46 feet. 18.46 feet here. To find A, will be the adjacent side, so this is a cosine of 67.38 degrees, equals A over 20. Again, we put this over 1, and we will cross, multiply, and divide. So cosine of 67.38 times 20. It was 7.69 feet here. So what does that tell us back up in our figure? Tells us this piece, 7.69 feet, which tells us that from here to here is 40 minus that 7.69, or sorry, not 40, but 20, half of the 40, <clears throat> so 20 minus that 7.69 or 12.31 feet from there out. Well, it also tells us, since we know that this is 8 feet, this piece here must be the 18.46 minus 8 feet. So let me draw that triangle over there. 18.46 minus 8 makes this 10.46 feet. We know this angle is 22.62. And this angle up here is 67.38. We can now find this side here, which is the, the main piece that's going to help us find X. So I'm going to call that side D. I'm going to use the 22.62. We have opposite and adjacent. We are dealing with tangent here. So tangent of 22.62 degrees equals my opposite side of 10.46 over my adjacent side of D. So I'll put this over 1 so that I can cross, multiply, and divide. So 10.46 times 1 divided by the tangent of 22.62 degrees. It was 25.10 feet. So if that's 25.10 feet, we can subtract the 12.31 here to get what's left over has to be X. So 25.10 minus 12.31 is 12.79 feet. So that is X. Takes about 12.79 feet. Now to find the area, it's relatively simple. We've got this rectangle here, piece one that's eight feet by, well, 25.10 feet gives us 200.08 square feet. This piece here, the second piece, is a triangle. 25.10 feet times that height was 10.46 divided by 2. Give us 131.27. Square feet. This is our third piece here, that triangle, which is 7.69 by, oh, what was that? 18.46 divided by 2 because it's a triangle. Here's 70.98. And finally, this fourth piece here is a sector of a circle, 
And we know that this angle here is 180 minus um, the 67.38. So that angle is 112.62 degrees. So that area, that fourth piece is pi. I'm just going to write in 3.14 times that radius of 20 squared times that angle of 112.62 over 360. That's the area for the sector of a circle. 3.14 times 20 squared times 112.62 divided by 360. It was 392.92 square feet. Add those all up. One thousand four hundred twenty five point two five square feet is our area. Not so bad, right? They actually get a little bit easier than that. If I want to find the area if this is a full half circle, and this is not necessarily tangent out here. I'm going to draw it so it's not tangent. It doesn't draw very well. Let me try that again. There. So it intersects into the roof rather than being tangent to the roof. We'll make this across here. Well, let's make it 50 feet. That would make this would have to be half that or 25 feet. So Again, all that's saying is the fact that 25 is half of 50. It's telling us that is a full half circle. So the center of our circle is in the middle down there. I'm going to tell you that this here sticks out 15 feet. This is 10 feet, and this is a 312 slope. And I want to find the area of this again. To find the area of this, now because we actually are given this length, Instead of being told to find that length, it actually makes life a lot easier. We are still going to draw in our radius out to this point. However, since this is not a tangent point, this is not a right angle. It'll be an obtuse angle. Because instead of coming in tangent, it's intersecting the roof, so that has to be wider than the 90 degrees. It has to be obtuse. We do know that there's a right angle here. So far, this is looking a lot like that last example. But the way we're going to divide this up is going to be a lot simpler. It's going to take fewer pieces. We're just going to cut this across here. Let me draw that in a little bit better. Like that. So we have this right angle here for this right triangle. And we'll have this other triangle up here that we'll have to break down. Well, let's look at this triangle down here for now. Have a right angle here. We know this is 10 feet. And we know the bottom down here, this would be our radius of 25 plus 15, is going to be 40 feet. Because of that, we can find this side right here quickly by doing the square root of 40 squared plus 10 squared. It is 41.23 feet. That's 41.23 feet across there. I can find this angle here by simply doing the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. Inverse tangent of 10 over 40 gives me 14.04 degrees. Let me double check that just because it's been a rough day, but. It is 14.04. So this is 14.04 degrees. That makes this up here. 
75.96 degrees right here. We now know everything about that triangle. Let's move on to this triangle up here. That triangle, we know this side is 25 feet. And we know this side here is 41.23 feet because it's the same side from the other triangle. But we don't know any angles at this point. But remember, we talked yesterday about how we can find the complete angle in this corner up here. That full corner looks something like that. I'm going to cut it like this so that this is 90 degrees. This here is the heel angle from our 312 slope. So that's just going to be the inverse tangent of our slope. Inverse tangent of 312 is 14.04 degrees. So that means this complete angle from here to here is 90 plus 14.04 or 104.04 degrees. This is our overall angle. That's 104.04 degrees. I can come back here. Subtract out the 75.96, telling us that this is, this angle here, is 28.08 degrees. That means this angle here, 28.08 degrees. If you look at this triangle, we have three different strategies using our trig functions that we can use to solve a triangle. We've been told that of the six pieces of a triangle, three sides, three angles, if I know three of them, as long as it's not just all three angles, if I know three of those six pieces, I can find the other six. Let's look at our possibilities. Possibility one, we have a right angle. If there's a right angle, we can just use regular trig. That's what we've been using so far. Sine, cosine, tangent. If there's no right angle, if we have a side and its opposite angle, that's when we can use the law of sines. Or if we had a, a two sides and the what we call the included angle, that was the angle between the two sides, that's when we use the law of cosines. Now, in, and that's the order we want to look for them, and we want to save that law of cosines for a last resort. Well, in this triangle, there are no right angles, so that's out. How about a side and its opposite angle? Well, yeah, we got 25 feet and the 28.08 degrees. We have a side and its opposite angle, which means we can do law of sines. So we've got that 25 feet over the sine of its opposite angle, so over the sine of 28.08 degrees equals, now the only other piece of information I have is the 41.23 feet. That's the length of a side, so it goes on top with the 25. I'm going to have to label this angle up here angle B, so I know that I'm finding the sine of angle B. So this is what I'm looking for, the sine of angle B. So I'm going to cross, multiply, and divide over here. I've got the sine of 28.08 times 41.23 divided by 25 giving me 0.7763. That's the sine of the angle. So the first thing I have to do is the inverse sine, or the next thing I should say I have to do is the inverse sine. So second sine, second answer. Here is 50.92 degrees. That's not our angle, though. 
very tempting to write that down and go with it, and it would be very, very wrong. The rest of the problem would be a waste. Remember, we said up here, that has to be an obtuse angle. So since it's an obtuse angle, when we do the inverse sign, after we have found this angle, the actual angle is 180 minus that angle. 129.08 degrees. Well, that's 129.08 degrees, which makes this angle down here, 180 minus all that junk. Um, what's that going to be? 22.84 degrees, I believe. Looks right to me. So we have the th all three angles of that triangle. We have two out of the three sides. For right now, that's all we need. We can find its area. We'll put that up here with the area of this uh, triangle that we found. Oops, where did we find it? We haven't found it yet, I guess. Let's start on with our area here. Well, this triangle right here was... 40 by 10. 40 by 2, this can be 200 square feet. This triangle down here, remember we've got that shortcut. You've got A times B times the sine of C divided by 2. So I've got 25 times 41.23 times the sine of 22.84 degrees over 2. It was 200.05 feet. My third and final piece for my area is this sector over here. And to find that area, I just need this angle. Well, I have this is 22.84, and this is 14.04. So that's a total of 26.88. Subtracted from 180 gives this 153.12 degrees. So that area is pi, 3.14, times my radius of 25 squared. That'd be the area of the whole circle. Times that angle, 153.12, over 360 degrees. 3.14 times 25 squared times 153.12 divided by 360. 834.72. Add those all up to get an area of 1234.77 square feet. 1,234.77 square feet is that area. Not so bad. Oh, we're at it. Let's do the roof length. What I mean by roof length on that, it's basically the part of the perimeter that would be the roof. So that's going to be around this and then down this slope. Not as much to it as you would think. The arc over here is going to be relatively easy to find. For that arc, it's the circumference of the whole circle, so it's pi times the diameter, so times 50 feet, times that angle of 153.12 over 360. Multiply that all out, 66.78 feet. 
So that was as the distance from here to here, to the rounded portion of the roof. The flat portion of the roof is just the length of this side of that triangle. I can find that using my law of sines again. I have 25 over the sine, 22.8, or sorry, 28.08 degrees. equals that missing side, I'm just going to call it x for now, over the sine, its angle, opposite angle is 22.84 degrees. So we will cross, multiply, and divide here. 25 times the sine, 22.84, close divided by the sine of 28.08. Twenty point six two. Twenty point six two feet. Got to add that up. Eighty-seven point four zero feet is the length of that roof line. Why is that important? Well, because now if I wanted to do the area of the roof or the volume of this shed, let's say, assuming it's some sort of a shed. Let's say I'm going to add that depth to it here. Let's say that this is 120 feet long. Well, my volume is going to be my area of the end there, the 1,234.77 square feet of area times that length of 120 feet will give me a volume of 148,172.4 cubic feet. Standard would typically, if we're looking at heating that or whatever, um, looking two to three BTU per cubic foot. So that's going to be a pretty hefty, probably going to be a double heating system in there. And next we're going to do roof area. The roof area would just be this length of the roof, 87.40 times that 120 feet of depth gives 10,488 square feet of roof area. So if we're going to be covering that with roofing, that's the size we would have to cover. Um, So oh, that, that's kind of where we were going with all of that stuff yesterday. Building up to our kind of our grand finale for today, which is a problem that looks like this. Now we gotta go one, let's go one more step before we get there. Let's do this problem now. For this dimension across here is 40 feet dimension up here um, let's call it I want to pick one that's going to work out well for us we'll call it 16 feet let's give this a depth of 60 feet here I want to find the volume in the roof area Find the volume, I'm finding the area of this end here, and I'm going to multiply by that 60 feet of depth. So I really need to find the area of that end. Then what we were just doing. Find the roof area, I need to find this length here, and multiply by that 60 feet of depth. 
So I'm also going to need to find the arc length. The rough. Well, let's work on finding that end. This is a segment of a circle, so I'm going to draw it as a bigger circle. All right, a little bit better, bigger circle than that. There we go. This is 40 feet across here and 16 feet here. If you recall, the way we handle that is we cut this in half to be 20 and 20. And we extend this 16 all the way across. I'm going to call that piece X. So we know 20 times 20 equals 16 times X. If I solve that, 20 times 20 is 400 equals 16X. Dividing by 16. Oh, what do I get? 25 equals X? So X is 25 feet. That tells us the diameter of this circle is 16 plus 25, or 41 feet. So the radius is half of the 41, it's 20.5 feet, or 20 and one half feet. The reason that's important is because now We can look at it like this. This is the segment area that we're trying to find. To find the area of that segment, remember, we first find the area of the sector. Find the area of the sector, we need this angle. To find that angle, I'm going to cut it in two pieces. I'm going to do this right triangle here. At right triangle, well, this is 20 feet here. And this is my radius of 20.5 feet. So this angle here is going to be the inverse sine. This is the opposite. The hypotenuse, the sine, so it's supposed to be the inverse sine of 20 over 20.5. Now, as you can see, this is going to be a huge angle. This is really close to being a half circle. is 77.32 degrees which means that, that full angle there is 154.64 degrees so the area of our sector is pi 3.14 times our radius of 20.5 squared times that angle of 154.64 over 360 3.14 times 20.5 squared times 154.64 divided by 360. 566.84 is square feet for area. From that, we have to subtract the area of the triangle. Well, that triangle is, we have A, B, and our angle, so it's going to be 20 times 20 times the sine of that angle, 154.64 degrees over 2. It has 85.66. Feet. Makes sense because realistically, um, if this was 16, this height right here is only like four and a half feet. So it's a really a small uh, triangle there. So we subtract to get the area of our sector, or sorry, not sector, but segment. Four hundred eighty one point one eight square feet. 
That's the area of that N. So the volume is simply that times 60. Four eighty one point one eight times sixty gives us a volume twenty eight thousand eight seventy point eight cubic feet of volume. The rough area is relatively simple to fill in from here. The rough area just requires us to find that arc length. That arc length is going to be pi times the circumference of this or the diameter of the circle which is 41 so that gives us the full circumference of the circle times our angle there of 154.64 over 360 3.15 or 3.15 come from it's pi 3.14 times 41 no squared we're not finding an area we're just finding the circumference so it's pi times diameter times 154.64 divided by 360. 55.30. It's just feet. It's just the length. This is 55.30 feet. Find the roof area. It's just that times 60 feet. 5.30 times 60. We get 338.06. Sorry, 3,318.06 square feet of the roof area. So a little over 33 squares for the roof. What do you think? Are we having fun yet? I have shown you everything you need to know. To solve this next problem. However, this next problem puts things together in a way that, I'll just put it shortly, it's just not very nice. We're going to start off with this that's 60 feet across and 18 feet high. We're going to add on to it this little section here that's going to stick out 12 feet, will be 8 feet high here. It's going to come in there, not at a tangent, at a 312 slope. I want to find, let's just find the area of this shape. We're not going to worry about building volume or roof area or anything like that. Let's just find the area of this shape. Well, this looks very similar to the first couple of examples we did, but with, there's one key difference. This piece here is not a full half circle. I'd have to extend it down to make it a full half circle. When it's not a full half circle, when it's just a segment of a circle like that, we could find it okay as long as it didn't have this little piece sticking out. That's the example we just did was just a segment like that without that piece sticking out. But when we put them together, when we have a segment of a, of a circle and that little piece sticking out, it becomes a very different problem, a very, a much more difficult problem. In fact, the only way we can work with this is to make it be a full half circle. So that means I have to look at my circle here. So this is 60 feet across and this is 18 feet up. I'm going to cut this into 30 feet and 30 feet. Cutting the 60 and half. This here is going to be X. So 30 times 30 equals 18 times X. If I solve that, 30 times 30 divided by 18. X is 50, which tells us that the diameter of this circle, 50 plus 18 is 68 feet. My radius is half of 68 or 34 feet. 
So in order for this to be a full half circle up here, it's a circle with a radius of 34 feet. So what I'm gonna do is from the middle here, I'm gonna bring this down through the center until I get down to 34 feet. That would be adding 16 feet to it because this is 18 feet. 18 plus 16 gives me the 34 feet that I need. Well, I have to do that to the rest of this. I'm gonna drop this straight down 16 feet. On this side, however, I'm gonna continue the curve, the arc of the circle. So that means it actually pushes out here a little bit. This is gonna be further than 30 feet out here because it's not half of the 60 mark because we continue to, to move outward with that arc. Now that I have this, now I would go through and do exactly what I did before. I draw this line here. I know this is 34 feet. I would connect this over to here. I did that curve just so purposely so I didn't go through that point because it doesn't go through that point. And if you assume that it goes to that point, it changes the calculation a lot, it makes life way more complicated. But in this triangle, this height is now 24 feet. This distance here is still half of the 60, which was 30 feet plus the 12. That's still 42 feet because we just brought this side straight down. So now we could do the exact same process we did up above to find the area of this whole thing. Well, once we find the area of that whole thing, however, that's not what we want. We just want the area of this piece. So we would have to subtract out the piece down here that we added on. Well, that comes in three easy pieces. We have a rectangle here. That is simply 16 feet high by 42 feet long. Six hundred and seventy two square feet. Over here, we're going to have two more pieces. This piece right here is a right triangle. This is sixteen feet by thirty feet. First divided by two because the triangle that's two hundred and forty square feet is what that comes out to be. And this piece over here is a little bit bigger than that. It's actually a sector of a circle. This is a radius of 30, what did we come up with, 34? Yeah, 34 feet here. And this is also 34 feet. We need this angle right here. Well, that angle is the same as this one up here. That one's going to be the inverse tangent of the opposite 16 over 30. giving us 28.07 degrees. So that third area here, this piece, is pi times that radius of 34 squared times that angle of 28.07 over 360. 3.14 times 34 squared times 28.07 divided by 360. 283.03 square feet. So if I add that all up, I get 1,195.03 square feet. That is the part that we would have to subtract from the whole area once we got it to get the area of the piece that we really want. I realize I flew through that. Um, the reason I flew through that is because I, I want to see if you guys can actually go through and do the rest of it. There's one problem on your worksheet. We're going to keep working on the same worksheet from yesterday. And there's one problem on the worksheet that is finding the area of something like this. I want to see if you can work through it on your own. Now remember, on Thursday of this week, that is April... 22nd, I will be gone. Um, I'm taking a personal day this Thursday, a little bit of personal time. I'll be in, in the morning for like an hour, um, and then I'll be out. 
Um, so when you guys are done with Scott Thursday morning, I think you're done with Scott relatively early. And um, when you're done with him, you are done for the day. So there won't be class on Thursday. So I won't see you again until next Monday. Um, remember on Mondays from now on, the class that used to be before you guys is done. That was a 12 week class. So if you guys need any tutoring, extra help or anything on, to get caught up on quizzes, because there are several of you that are missing some quizzes right now. Um, feel free to come in on Monday sometime during that hour before our normally scheduled class. So for right now, your homework is to finish that worksheet from yesterday. So that is the lecture material. I want you guys to have the rest of our time to work on that worksheet. I'll be logged in here for a while if you have any questions. Um, otherwise, you guys have a great day. See you all next Monday.